What's up YouTube, back at it again with another banger video. This time we're taking a look at the first time Spider-Man ever met the Fantastic Four. Now we're looking at this book that we've looked at before, The Amazing Spider-Man Marvel Masterworks by Stan Lee and Steve Ditko. This is kind of a follow-up to that original video that I did uh, a while back about Spider-Man's first appearance. So this is the second half of Spider-Man, uh, Amazing Spider-Man 1. And it's it's the first time we're meeting the Chameleon. And it's the first time Spider-Man meets the Fantastic Four. So let's get started. On panel 1, you see a mistake. Stanley refers to Peter Parker as Peter Palmer. And that's consistent throughout the rest of this issue. But that, that's not the first time he's done this either. Like, I think he did the same thing in The Hulk. You know, he creates these alliterative names and then forgets what exactly the alliteration is. Earlier in the same issue, they refer to him as Peter Parker. But yeah, in this, in the second half, they, they switch his name to Peter Palmer and then uh, stick with that for the rest of the issue. So it's inconsistent even within the same comic. But anyways, Peter Palmer, he's he needs money. That's a common theme throughout all Spider-Man uh, media is like Peter's broke and he needs he needs money. So he figures that he'll join the Fantastic Four. The Fantastic Four, they're like celebrities in the Marvel Universe, at least at this point. They, every, they don't have secret identities. Everyone knows who they are and where they live. They live in this Baxter building, uh, although I'm not sure that it's called that yet. That sort of comes along later. But he figures that with his superpowers, he'll join the Fantastic Four, and that'll be a way that he can sort of make money. So he goes as Peter to the Baxter building. They have a special elevator that only the uh, the members of the Fantastic Four can use. And he tries to uh, slip past it. The elevator's blocking the uh, the elevator shaft. He thinks maybe he can he can crawl up it. That doesn't work. It's blocked off. He has to go outside. And uh, he spins a web, and he walks across it from the, the building uh, next door. And when he crawls in through the window, he springs this uh, security feature. This, this elaborate trap they have set up of these, uh, this like plexiglass tube that, that you see on the cover. And this is, uh, this keeps him held for not even one panel. So he's a home invader. Yeah, he just broke into their uh, to, to their house. Uh, Spider-Man in this story, in these uh, in a lot of these early stories, isn't as squeaky clean as he is like in the movies or in later appearances. Like he's he's a jerk. He has a bad personality. He's not as heroic or altruistic as he would later be. And I think that. I think that that's better. I think that that adds like some personality to his character. And he really seems like a, a bratty teen. The Thing punches him. Spider-Man fights back a little bit. The Thing says he was pulling his punches because he can tell that Spider-Man's a kid. Um, Mr. Fantastic tries to catch him. He gets tangled up in web. And uh, Invisible Girl, she uh, tries to lasso him. And his spider senses detect that something's there. That's going to be a theme throughout this story, is that his spider senses come in handy. And in these early stories, they are his spider senses are super OP. They can do anything. Like, any time that, uh, that Stan Lee and Steve Ditko kind of get backed into a corner, they can always rely on the spider senses to get them out of, like, whatever, uh, whatever sticky situation that, that Peter has found himself in. Mr. Fantastic, he breaks up the fight. Spider-Man says, uh, I came up here to join you guys. I want to be a member of the Fantastic Four. Also, very bold of him to think that he can join the Fantastic Four when there's already four members. Like, does he think that they're going to kick somebody out? Is he going to replace somebody? Is it going to be the Fantastic Five? Are they going to have to, like, redo all of their branding and all their costumes? Because everything's marketed with the four. Like, he, you can't just come in and make... The Fantastic Five, like, they're going to have to, like, redo everything. But anyways, that, that was his plan. He's, his plan to get rich is to join them. And uh, the thing says, I knew it. 
That kook has rocks in his head. And Sue says, afraid you made a mistake, Spider-Man. We're a non-profit organization. Reed says, we pay no salaries or bonuses. Any profit we make goes into scientific research. Put a pin in that. We're going to come back to that later. And Johnny says, you came to the wrong place, pal. This isn't General Motors. We just keep enough money to pay our expenses. Every other cent goes into developing the most efficient super crime fighting apparatuses we can create. Besides, aren't you wanted by the police? This isn't Outlaws Anonymous. That, that seems like the same joke, one panel apart. This isn't General Motors. This isn't Outlaws Anonymous. <laughs> kind of repeating themselves. Uh, so Spider-Man leaves. He's like, well, if you, if you guys don't pay money, then I don't want to be a part of your group. There's really no point. Meanwhile, across town... Uh, this guy named the Chameleon, who, to my knowledge, has never been in, used in any live-action movie. I remember he was in the TV shows, but I don't know why they haven't adapted his character into live-action yet. He, he seems like a like a fun character, but uh, he, his gimmick is that he can he's a master of disguise. He can make himself look like anyone else. So he breaks in. He's he's stealing these uh these documents about with about rockets like like a nuclear plans or whatever he's at a defense installation at the edge of town he ties up this guy assumes his identity passes a scientist assumes the scientist's identity he steals these documents he brings them back but this is only half of the documents that he needs he needs the other half to complete his plan he reads about spider-man going to the Baxter building and he figures oh Spider-Man must have been looking for a job which is a huge leap to to come to like a jumping to conclusions like this how did how would he know that that was the reason that Spider-Man went to the Baxter building but he says there is only one reason Spider-Man would want to join the Fantastic Four being sought by the police there is no way for him to earn a legitimate living he must be desperate for money and this is where i come in so even people who don't even know peter know that he's broke here's what i was talking about the op spider sense spider-man will make a perfect fall guy for me when i steal the second half of these missile defense plans i'll have him put the police off my trail spider-man has the powers and instincts of a spider so I will send him a message that only spider senses will be able to pick up. How does he know that? How does he know that Spider-Man has spider senses? How does he know what frequency to tune that message to that he's broadcasting? How does he know what what frequency spiders can hear? Or that like a, a man mutated spider could hear? Like it makes sense for Superman. Like when that happens in the Superman movie, Lex Luthor does like this high pitched sound that only, you know, that only someone with super hearing could hear because that was pre-established in the movie that like, you know, Superman has told the world about his abilities through the article that Lois Lane put out. Here, Spider-Man has never done, this is Amazing Spider-Man 1, Spider-Man's never been interviewed about his powers. So there's really no way of the chameleon knowing that Spider-Man has these abilities. So he's just guessing or getting getting lucky, but it, of course it works. Of course it does. So it, it, hurt, it works right away. Peter hears him, Peter Palmer. He switches to Spider-Man. Uh, oh, I should tell you what the message was. Calling Spider-Man, meet me on the roof of the Lark building at 10 tonight. It will be very profitable for you. And that's all you had to say. Peter's there. And, uh, a few minutes before 10, there's this elevator guy. Uh, the chameleon assumes his identity. He uh, he goes in for the, the late night shift at the elevator. And you see here, he's wearing the mask of this guy, the elevator guy. And then when he's in the elevator, he pulls off the mask. And we see that he's wearing the Spider-Man costume underneath. So I'm just wondering what he must have looked like with that man's face on over the Spider-Man mask. Like he must not have, we, we see him, he speaks, so he must open his mouth. 
So the guy <laughs> looking at this guy opening his mouth just sees like the red of the mask underneath of the Spider-Man mask. And what about his eyes? Like the Spider-Man eyes are completely white. So this guy just has like a red gaping mouth and white eyes. That would be terrifying. I anyways, it, it, it would all be, this whole thing would be solved if instead of taking off this mask to reveal the Spider-Man costume, if he was just putting the Spider-Man costume over. If he was just already wearing this guy's face and then pulls the mask out of his pocket and puts it on over his face. This scene would make a lot more sense. But anyways, he switches to his Spider-Man costume. He gets up to the uh, to the top floor where this guy has these uh, missile plans. He uses his web gun to fire a web at this guy because he doesn't know how to build web shooters. He, he just builds a gun that can shoot webs. Which is kind of like the idea, I remember like the, the I've heard about the debates of who created Spider-Man, you know, Jack Kirby did a sketch of his idea of Spider-Man, and the guy had a gun that could shoot webs, and that idea was ultimately not used, and Steve Ditko's idea was used of the with the web shooters, so this is kind of like using that idea in a, in a weird way, so back to the story, Spider-Man the chameleon rushes up these stairs there's a an escape there's a there's a helicopter on the roof for his escape he takes off the real spider-man swings underneath and when he gets to the rooftop the police are just arriving they're, they're, they're after chasing after the chameleon and they see him there and they think that he's just stolen these these missile plans so he has to web them the web up the cops because they're after him and then he figures, oh, they're chasing the guy in the helicopter. I need to go after him. So, he, again, he uses his spider senses. So he's able to uh, to track. He uses it like a tracking device. So he's able to uh, launch himself like this across the city. <laughs> he gets in a speedboat, which I guess the keys were in the ignition. Because he just starts it up and takes off. And follows this helicopter out into the ocean where there's a Soviet submarine, which is ironic because uh because we just had a video, my my last video from a couple days ago involved communism and the Soviets. So it's a, it's staying on theme. There's a hatch on top of the sub. Spider-Man webs that up so that they can't get out, and they they realize that there's a there's something going on, there's something fishy here. Chameleon's plan was to sell these these missile plans to the Soviets, and now that the they've realized that that something's going wrong, someone's there that's not supposed to be there, they uh, they they decide the plane is off and they go back into the ocean, and Spider Man wrecks that boat into their submarine. We don't know whose boat that was. I hope they had insurance on it, but because he just destroys that boat, and. Uh, we know he's not going to pay him back because we've established in this story he has no money. So I don't know. He's just going around breaking other people's, you know, private property. That's not very cool. Chameleon does some uh, helicopter maneuvers to try and shake Spider-Man. It doesn't work. Spider-Man rips the door off and forces him to land. When they land back on the roof, Chameleon drops a smoke pellet. And disappears back into the building, the Lark building. And he goes into one of the rooms and switches outfits and he, he becomes one of the policemen. And Spider-Man, he's using his spider senses again to track this guy. He, he knows it's, it's one of the policemen because they have guards on every door, on every window. There's no way he could escape. So we, we know he's in this room with us. Spider-Man... Using his spider senses, he narrows it down to three guys. He's like, it's one of these guys. And then the lights go out. He flips the breaker, tries to escape. Spider-Man, he runs out of web web fluid. That's another thing that comes up a lot in these Spider-Man stories. Like, he runs out of web fluid at the wrong time, the worst possible moment. So he has to solve it without his webs. He's uh, using his spider senses in the dark. He jumps across the ceiling. He tackles somebody. It's this guy. The lights come back on. He's like, it's this guy. I know it is. But that guy, 
the chameleon, the cop, he's saying, no, this is the chameleon in the Spider-Man costume. He's attacking me. So they're not really sure who to believe. So Spider-Man, to prove that he's the real Spider-Man, he leaps onto the wall. And they're like, well, uh, an imposter couldn't do that. And in this scuffle, the uh, the uniform of the police, the policeman's uniform was torn. And you can see the uh, Spider-Man costume on underneath. So they're like, well, there's our man. There's our imposter. <laughs> and Spider-Man, he runs away because he's out of web fluid. He just has to run away on foot. <laughs> and he says, nothing turns out right. Sob. I wish I had never gotten my superpowers. So I just imagine him crying like as he has to walk home because he's broke. He can't afford a, a subway ticket. He can't afford bus fare. Can't afford a taxi. He's just walking home. <laughs> a defeated, crying superhero. And the Fantastic Four read about it in the paper. And they were like, maybe we were wrong about this kid. Maybe, maybe he will grow up to be a hero. And it says the whole world will have to wonder until our next great issue. Don't miss it. So that was the first time he met the Fantastic Four. But since we're here, I was going to go ahead and flip forward to their to another meeting that they had later on. This one's drawn by Jack Kirby. And you can tell it looks a little bit different. I mean, you see the, the faces, especially the women. Like, he draws very uh, recognizable faces, at least in, in my opinion. Like, there's no way you're getting it confused with a Steve Ditko woman's face. This this story starts out great, too. Like, if you thought that him being broke and invading somebody's home in the last story was, was funny, uh, this is how this story begins. It's Spider-Man. He's watching the Human Torch roll up in his car. This is where Doris Evans, the Torch's girlfriend, lives. When I'm in the neighborhood, I'll pay her a visit and show her what she's missing by not dating Spider-Man. So he shows up to try and steal the Human Torch's girlfriend, <laughs> which also isn't very cool. Uh, he's like, well, hit my head and call me Shorty. Looks like I'm just in time for a party. And uh, they, they're like, oh my God, look, it's Human Torch. We've been waiting for him. We've been hoping he would show up. I said, Johnny Storm, you didn't tell me you had a new Stingray. It's gorgeous. And then the person down here says, last week he was driving an XK Jag, and now this. Oh, if only Doris hadn't found him first. And uh, we see Johnny says, well, it's no fantastic car, but it takes me where I'm going. Pause. Can we back up for a second? Afraid you made a mistake, Spider-Man. We're a nonprofit organization. We pay no salaries or bonuses. Any profits we make go into scientific research. You came to the wrong place, pal. This isn't General Motors. We keep enough money to pay our expenses. Every other cent goes to developing the most effective super crime fighting apparatuses we can create. Bullshit. He's driving around in sports cars. They're misappropriating funds. Hear about it here first. Spider-Man's a jerk, and the Fantastic Four are embezzling money. So this whole story is just about Spider-Man. He ruins the, the Human Torch's party. He barges in uninvited. He makes a big web bat that scares the party guests. He gets in a fight with Human Torch. He hits him with either sand or water. I can't really tell what's going on here. It looks like sand. But then it says that the Human Torch has to dry off. So that makes me think that maybe it's water. So anyways, this becomes like a huge fight. And then Spider-Man, he, he narrowly avoids this, this net of flames. That's what they call this, a net of flames. And he's on his stomach. Mr. Fantastic offers to help him up. What does Spider-Man do? He, he gets all aggressive, starts beating up Reed. The Thing wants to smash him with this rock. And look at this. He says, uh, For the love of Pete, where'd he go? Spider-Man says, I'll give you three guesses, Gargoyle. Flip over the page. He throws the rock. Spider-Man makes this, like, wingsuit midair. He's able to make this out of webs. Before he can land, and uh, we see the, the consequences of this, what happens... 
uh, Sue catches him. She, like, gets him caught in his own webs. And she pulls him down to the ground. I guess his spider senses didn't work that time. Because he definitely didn't didn't sense her there. You see, Sue says, Now why don't you boys just shake hands like gentlemen and bury the hatchet? And Johnny says, I'd like to bury it all right. And I'll give you three guesses where. Again, repeating the same joke from just the page before. I'll give you three guesses, Gargoyle. And I'll give you three guesses where. Guys, come on. I mean, this is one page. This is one turn of the page and you're reusing the same joke? That's, that's it's insane. Come on. <laughs> come on, do better, 1960s Marvel. So uh, Spider-Man leaves. He says, you guys are all losers. He's been nothing but antagonistic. And he leaves uh, Sue a little heart because he's a simp. He, li he likes the invisible girl. And he leaves her a little web heart. Um... I can't help but feel like Jack Kirby didn't really like Spider-Man. He makes him seem like an asshole in this. <laughs> because, you know, his characters are the Fantastic Four. So, of course, he wants to make his characters look the best or the most powerful. And uh, Spider-Man, yeah, he's just a jerk in this. Like, he has no uh, redeeming qualities. He... He shows up to steal Human Torch's girlfriend, and then by the end of it, he's hitting on his sister. So, great superhero he turned out to be. Well, that's all for this one. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit like and smash that subscribe button. I'll see you in the next one. Bye!